You did, Jason Benjamin. Thank you, thank you. There's a few people I want to just say hi to. Um, first of all, Owen Pallette, who's the composer. Woo! Uh, thank you. Just did an exceptional job. I just want to say hi. Just raise your hand so people know where you are. Okay, so. and, and also, the other person I really need to talk about just for a second is Mickey Milmore Watanabe, who is the editor who sat next to me patiently for probably a year. Mickey, please raise your hand. Just take your applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to invite Lena Dunham and Jenny Connor to join me up here to talk. I'd also like to invite the entire cast who's here to come and, and, and share the stage with me. Thank you. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Joanna, you too, please. Joanna, I know you're pregnant. You can make it go. Our wedding has resulted in a, in, in, in a pregnancy that we're very happy about. I also have to talk about Howard Norman for a second from Grand Jute. He's responsible for all of the wonderful graphics that you saw, all the email stuff, the title sequence. I'm not sure if he's here tonight. Howard, are you here? You're here. Yes. And Logan. Logan, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. It came out great. Thank you so much. tragedy of the movie is that we don't all have Derek's parents. <laughs> they are the best people who ever That is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Last night Derek was like, I think they come off well. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they come off better than any humans ever come off. You know, this is the first time everyone's seen this film and I actually spent the whole time, like I have a stiff neck because I just watched you all watching it. And I just wept. Yeah. <laughs> it was really, I thought it was incredible and it was amazing to see on a big screen and I hope you guys feel as proud of it as we do. I mean, Ray and Dan were like therapists, right? Like the best therapists in the world. Right? When we first saw the footage, there's the most charismatic person, like maybe, who I've ever lived. <laughs> Like, we're like, oh, it's Warren Beatty. That's cool. <laughs> and Daniel, they're just so sensitive and lovely the way they treat Aiden, the bar mitzvah boy. It's just, it's just stunning, I think. So I'm really glad to share it with all of you. And I think Jason just did such an incredible job. And I just wanted to thank every single one of the people who opened their life up for this film. I think that seeing it on the big screen was a reminder that that's not something you had to do. And it means so much to so many people who aren't you. And we just, we're so full of gratitude that you let us into your lives and let us into this process. So we love you. It's so true. Can you say one more thing? says this line in the movie that always gets me where Ray says like, She's leading someone to the back of the fashion show, and she says, like, come back here, it's crowded, because there's, like, a lot of us. And I'm like, fuck yeah, there's a lot of us. <laughs> like, it's so great. And I think this movie is so optimistic. Like, I'm like, Hillary's going to win, and everyone's going to be fun. <laughs> so is our next move, do you have questions? Do we, t do, should we, what happens now? Do we just ask, ask them questions? questions? You can ask questions. I can ask the first question. How about um, I'll, I'll direct this at whoever wants to answer it. Um, this is clearly a film where uh, the, the relationship of director and subject and the, the trust between uh, those, those parties is at work. And, and I really think that Ray and Daniel are such conduits to that trust too. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the, your process and how you how you were able to achieve that? Well, I think one of the most fundamental parts of making a documentary is gaining trust with the subjects, and I think that's uh, achieved mostly by spending time with them. So spending time with Ray and Daniel initially, and then with each of the subjects, before they even came in to film most of the time, was a very important part of the subject and how we sort of knew each other um, in, in, a, in a close way. Uh, 
Anyone want to add to that? I just, one thing. Um, when I first went to meet Jason, I, um, I was taking a picture and walking down the sidewalk, and I turned and I tripped. And like I stumbled, like that most embarrassing thing. And I look around and there's nobody on the street except there's a guy coming towards me. I'm like, please don't let that be him. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> and I think that actually got us off to a really good start. Because it, it was like the way he handled my utter humiliation was sort of like, oh, all right, I think I can trust this guy. Um, Jason came to Providence, where we live and went out to lunch with us and talked to us about the film. And I went into the conversation thinking, I don't know, is he gonna exploit us? Is this gonna make us uncomfortable? And I left thinking, I'll do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> um, you talked about Ray and Daniel being conduits for that connection. And I, I think we can all attest to the fact that because Ray is like very much familiar with what we're going through, we all felt really comfortable um, that we're in really good hands, you know, like you always had our back. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and um, so yeah, it was really comforting to know like there's always someone in our corner and if we never were pressured to do anything we didn't want to do, Jason was always there like, do you want to answer this question? If you don't, like, don't say anything, you know, so that was really important. And I just want to say, my um, my sister, who's in the film but isn't here and makes a brief appearance talking about how great her boobs are, um, is a very, I think because of what my life has become in a lot of ways, is a very press shy person and meeting and was very sure that being a part of this documentary wasn't going to feel comfortable for her and for what she was going through. And I think it was meeting Jason and hearing his vision and also hearing how sensitive he was to taking cues from the people in the film that made her understand um, that this was something that was worth being involved in. And I actually started to cry so much watching this because it was the first time that I had really had a chance to see her be herself. And that is a really uh, powerful thing to feel, I think, we see in this film as a relative. To see someone get to embody that is really powerful. And I guess I, would, I just wanted to... And in terms of uh, Ray and Daniel, did you have any hesitation in, when someone wanted to make a doc about you? Take it away, Ray. Yes. Um, yeah, I feel extremely protective of not just myself, but my clients um, and my entire community. So uh, my gut reaction to this documentary being proposed was absolutely not. You know, just not a chance. But then, like everyone else, I actually sat down and talked to Jason, and I thought, well, if I could trust any guy, it's going to be this one. And I figured it was my Saturn return, and I should probably take a chance. Um, but yeah, I absolutely hesitated. And um, after watching it tonight, um, I think we made the right choice in trusting you, right? And all of you. Hey, thanks for making this film. Um, I have a 20-year-old daughter who went to St. Anne's who just came out as queer this year, which is very confusing for me. I know lesbian people, I know gay people, I know you know, straight people. And so I just wanted to thank you for showing the complete spectrum. And I'm wondering how many more people than the ones that ended up in the film did you feature before you chose this lovely, wonderful spectrum? And furthermore, how long is the waiting list for suits? <laughs> it's about to be really long, yeah. so get on it tonight. <laughs> and just, we're you know, all we're wearing all wearing them right way. now. Everybody oh. open your jacket. Yeah. I think just to speak to your question about how many people did we work with yeah. that didn't wind up in the film, I think that literally there was only one person that uh, we started to film, uh, and it was more of a matter of him moving to Minnesota, so it became um, unwieldy in certain ways. But we, everyone we started filming with, we, we finished. Awesome, great, thank you.
Okay. How did you decide on this project? You know, how did this come to you? Um, I read an article in the New York Times. There was a profile of Bindle and Keep, and in that article, there was a description of the moment when a client gets on the suit for the first time after having a lifetime of struggling with their body image and with clothes that don't fit. And that image of this person sort of realizing who they were in a mirror sounded very powerful and cinematic to me. And, and, and then, with that idea, I, I happened to be the boom operator on the television show Girls. So I mentioned that idea to my good friends, Jenny and Lena, and they were very supportive. And they suggested, they recommend, they, they, they encouraged me to sort of go for it and contact Bindle and keep it, see if we could get a project going. And then, yeah, I remember when you got the email back from Ray and Daniel that said, like, you were going to get to have lunch with them, and it was such, we were like, he's having the lunch, he's going in, he's got to seal this deal. <laughs> um, and then HBO got involved, and something that we're really proud of is that this began as a short documentary, and once they saw the footage and saw these characters and saw what Daniel and I were doing, um, they felt strongly that it could be expanded. So that was a really amazing vote of confidence for the subject, and also just such a great testament to... HBO's desire to put important progressive work onto television. Okay. I'm old enough to say this to all of you. I feel like you're Auntie Homo up here, and you are all my children, you know? And, and, and the wonderful thing about this film is about fashion and feeling good about yourself. It's not about academic arguments, you know, and, it, and I just want to say, I'd love to take you all home and make you dinner. <laughs> but, but to Jason, to Jason, the structure of the film is very beautiful, and, it's, and it, it holds together each story. Could you talk about how you came up with the structure of the film? Um, the structure of the film was complicated and took us a long time to arrive at, but it was very much uh, a process that involved Mickey Mumor Watanabe, the editor, whose uh, brilliance you can see on the screen, and, and uh, who was instrumental in sort of finding that rhythm. And when did Owen come in? That's a good question. Owen, uh, I want to say Owen was there for the last third of the, of the production, you know, maybe four months before we locked the picture. There are a number of different sort of versions of the score that we, we, we went through, and, and uh, I think Owen did a fantastic, fantastic job. If you don't know, Owen's a very successful musician on his own terms and a famous Canadian. <laughs> Canadian of import, if you will. <laughs> we have time for a couple more questions. Come back. Yes, you. Um, this documentary has been made five years ago. It seems like things have progressed. Uh, people are becoming, you mentioned like Caitlyn Jenner in the documentary briefly. Like, do you think significant things have been happening in the last like couple of years that kind of allowed this documentary to be possible? Do you think it could have been made? I'm going to answer this one. Um, well, it, it, I mean, it, it depends on, on the acceptance of, of the viewer. But what we're trying to show is that, I mean, look, I'm uh, my first real exposure to, uh, uh, the first time I ever became close with anyone who was a member of the queer community was Ray. And... Um, what we're trying to show is that you don't need to have, you know, I say this all the time, a PhD in, in gender studies to make people feel really damn happy about <laughs> who they are. That's right. And it's not, you know, rocket science at all. Um, maybe now is the time that, you know, national discourse is, is, is more active, but this could have happened any time. Um, I'm not enlightened. I'm not smarter than anyone here. Uh, I just, all you have to do is listen. And if you listen and you hear what people are saying and what people want, to, how they want to feel, it's easy. 
It's easy. You just make what what people want. You don't have to think about their gender or their you know sexual identity or even anything. You just think of how they want to feel, and we all want to feel a certain way. We're all triggered by certain things that. Uh, make us feel badly about ourselves or make us feel a little bit out of place. And, uh, and that's all we're doing. This is a, a company that, that serves everybody. Um, you know, we don't market ourselves to the LGBTQ community. So, you know, this sounds like a very topical thing, and, and I, I get that, but I think that this is very progressive in the sense that this isn't about the LGBTQ community. This is about just being open to everybody because all of these people up here are human beings. And that's all that this is about. They all have the same struggles that all of us have. Um, and that's what I, what, I mean, it's my first time ever seeing this too. But, but I think that that's kind of the idea that I'm taking away from it. And I hope that you guys do too. I saw a question right here. Last question. That's Doretta, but you could yeah. introduce her better than I could. She's Polish. She went to a great, you know, sartorial kind of uh, school. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Um, she's got a great story. Uh, the, the thing is, um, you know, I don't think I, I'm not. I'm not so sure um, how. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people in the company who who come from backgrounds that really had no exposure to this. And um, in the beginning, when we started uh, really embracing for everybody, and you know our, our demographic changed, our market changed, and the way we were cutting suits changed, and there was a, a, a certain level of sort of growing pains within the company, which I think is healthy. And um, you know, uh, Dorta did not grow up uh, where this was certainly embraced in Poland, and um, I mean. She cries alongside everybody else, and uh, it's, I mean, that's all, that's, that's amazing to us, it's amazing to her, and, you know, it's amazing to our clients. I want to congratulate all of you. Um, you all look amazing, <laughs> and um, thank you for bringing your film to Sunrise. Thanks, everyone. I, I forgot to mention... Stacey Reese, Eric Amigo, and Carly Hugo, who are producers behind the scenes and who this project could not have happened without. I'm sure it's so happy. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.